Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are once again outside my house with the solar air conditioner. I hope you don't mind my voice, I'm just getting over a bit of a cold here. Uh, last time we left off, I told you guys I was going to be disconnecting this thing from AC power for the month of June and just letting it run totally on solar. Now, as you can see, the sun's getting a little bit low in the sky. It's about 6 p.m. Uh, and the problem I've been running into is I'm actually running out of solar a little bit earlier than I'd like. I'd like to run this thing till about 7, 7.30 p.m. on the hot days. Um, and it's just getting too low on power. It can't really run past 7 p.m. So uh, speaking of solar, the last couple of videos, I've had a few people complain saying I never show the solar. Um, I do show them in the other videos, but here they are. They're kind of up out of sight. You can't really see them. They're on top of my pergola. So uh, feeds into the unit through this little disconnect box here. This is a breaker I'm not a huge fan of. So if you can recommend something that I could replace this with, please let me know in the comments. This is just a cheap Amazon breaker. It's DC rated 500 volts, but I don't really trust it. Um, it's getting a little bit warm at times. I just don't think if it ever had to trip under load, I think it might it might be an issue. It might be a bit of a fire. So here are my panels. I have six panels. I currently only have five of them connected to the AC. Uh, they're 235 watt panels. I'm pushing around 175 volts DC right now uh, and 200, 210 when I have them all hooked up. But um, yeah, I'm running out of power. I want to be able to extend the runtime on this a little bit, and that is where this guy is going to come into play. So, this was sent to me by Power Queen. I got to give a huge thanks to them for sending this out. I was actually thinking about buying one of these not even two weeks ago, and uh, I got an email from them asking if I would like to use it in a video, and I had the perfect application for it. So, uh, this is their 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. If you're in the solar kind of YouTube space, you definitely know about these batteries. They're getting very popular. Uh, um, they're a great, great product. I love this thing. I've been testing it out. It's working awesome. Um, one thing I always recommend if you're buying a battery from Amazon or whatever, so these new companies pop up every day. So before you buy one, just shoot them an email, ask them a few questions about the battery. You'll find with power queen, they get back to you right away. Some of these other guys, you'll never hear back from them. And that's the case when you buy the battery from them. If you have an issue, you're never going to hear back. Power queen gets back to you within 12 to 24 hours. They're very quick. They've got good customer service. Um, so you know if you ever have an issue, you're at least going to be able to get a hold of them, get the warranty going. And uh, yeah, I would always recommend you send that email before you buy the product, just so you know. But this is their 100 amp hour model. It's got a 100 amp BMS, meaning it can discharge at 100 amps DC continuous uh, without you know overheating, causing a problem. And it'll do that for about an hour. That's where it gets the name 100 amp hour. So I'm going to hook this up. We're going to run it on the solar air conditioner after the sun gets a little bit lower here and see see how long we can get out of it. Um, I'll show you my my app right now so you can see how much sun I'm actually getting. So I'm getting about 260 watts solar. AC is making up for the rest of that. So once we get a little bit lower, uh, once the sun gets a little lower in the sky, we'll switch this thing over and run it strictly on battery. Um, running around four or 500 watts, this thing should be able to put out about two, a little over two hours of runtime just on this one battery. So that's going to be awesome for the days where the sun goes down and you just need a little bit more life out of this solar AC and you don't want to tie to the grid or you're off grid. So this is going to be a good option and uh, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so it's a little after 7 p.m. and as you can see, we are pretty much out of solar. We're down to 80 watts solar input running mostly on grid. And this is where if you didn't have that grid tie, this thing already would have shut off on low voltage. This is my little portable power station. I built this in another video. I'll link it below if you want to watch it later. But basically it's a computer case. It's got a thousand watt inverter stuffed in it. It did have a Victron charge controller and it fits a 100 amp hour battery perfectly. So I'm going to load it up. Here we go, all loaded up. I pulled the whip out of the disconnect and put a plug on the end of it. So we are gonna be able to plug this right into the power station. Um, I got my Venlabs clamp meter here. So we'll keep an eye on the DC amps, um, the volts, both AC and DC, and just see how this thing performs. I'm only gonna run it for about an hour. I don't wanna run it too low because this AC is obviously pretty sensitive equipment. Um, as you can see, we've got a fully charged lithium battery. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't want to run the voltage too low and, and risk a low voltage situation for the inverter board on the, on the AC. So here we go. Solar input has been shut off. Uh, we're going to fire this up, keep an eye on everything. I think it's going to do good, but, uh, we'll get started and see how it goes. Okay, let's fire it up. I'm going to turn it down to 72. Um, the room is already about 72, so it doesn't have to work too hard. It's kind of just going to be maintaining. should be running right around four or 500 watts. 
And here we go. The uh, compressor is starting up. We can see the amps climbing. So far, so good. Here's the solar breaker, so you can see I do still have it off. So we're holding right around 39 amps. That is about 500 watts. I'll screen record here so you can see. Uh, yeah, just short of 500 watts. We're running at about 480. Um, I'll open the power consumption for the day so I can show you how much AC input we're going to use. Uh, this will record how many kilowatts between 7 and 8 p.m. So we'll check back in with that. As you can see, we've used 0 .09, uh, sorry, 0 0.069 kilowatt hours, which is about 69 watt hours. And we'll check back in with that after. So it's been 30 minutes. We are now down to 31.9 amps DC. So the AC is leveled out a bit. It's only pulling about 400 watts um, and it's working good. I'm gonna check the voltage here and I'll show you what that's at. Sorry for shaking you around so much. I'm trying to do this one handed, but you can see we're right around 13 volts at the half hour mark, which is pretty good. Uh, we're pulling about four or 500 watts continuous and we have 120 volts on the AC side. So things are looking great. Everything's working really good. AC's cooling nicely. I'll check back in with you shortly. Okay, it's after 8 p.m. You can see how low the sun is. My backyard is fully shaded, so we're gonna check the vitals once again. Thought I'd show you the service valves here. A nice drip coming off each one. Everything is cooling nicely. Uh, yeah, we're at the one hour mark, a little over the one hour mark, and it's still running strong. No issues whatsoever. You wouldn't know this was running on a battery if you were in the house. Uh, we're still pulling about 32 amps, so around 400 watts draw on the air conditioner. Our AC voltage is sitting at 120 volts on the inverter side, so that's good. No low voltage issues whatsoever for the air conditioner. We'll check the DC on the battery. And we are still sitting just shy of 13 volts DC, 12.93. So that's pretty good for pulling 400 watt hours out of this battery. It's still got a good uh, good voltage, so um, pretty impressed with it. It's totally cool to the touch, actually. I wish I had one of those infrared thermometer guns. I could show you visually that this thing is just nice and cool to the touch. No heat whatsoever. I think that was pretty light work for the, uh, the Power Queen battery. So... If I had another one, I would run this a little deeper. Um, like I said, I just don't want to run too deep on the charge to risk kind of a low voltage disconnect situation for the inverter. Um, I'll show you the usage here between 7 and 8 p.m. So we are going to be the bright orange bar right there. So looks like between 7 and 8 p.m. we use just shy of 400 watt hours, 391 watt hours. And then after 8 p.m. we ran about 10 more minutes and we use 41 watt hours. So a little over 400 watt hours total. This battery is rated for 1250 watt hours. So with that math, we should be able to run this in theory for about three hours. Um, like I said, I don't wanna risk running it too deep on the air conditioner and uh, having a low voltage situation. So here's the battery. I pulled it out of the computer case. Like I said, totally cool to the touch. Um, worked great. It's sitting at 13.38 volts, which is really good for pulling that much power out of it. We probably pulled about 33% out of the battery. So, uh, judging by this little chart here, we should be sitting closer, uh, closer to the 70%, 13.2 volts, but it's reading 13.3. So overall, very impressed with the battery. Um, if you want to see any more tests with this battery in the kind of HVAC uh, world, let me know any ideas you have. I do have another idea for, for this, but I think I would need a second battery. So stay tuned. Hopefully I can get my hands on one. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd hit that subscribe button, I'm getting so close to a thousand subscribers. That would be a great help. So once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.